to welcome all to the regular meeting of the Forum Romanum. We usually start with a few words from our Caesar Professor Sima Avramovich, but he called me to say that he is stuck in some traffic jam and that he will probably be late and that we should start without him. And he'll join us when he's able. So it's my pleasure tonight to present to you Dr. Ivan Bilalski from the Institute for Historical Research of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, who is a very prolific author, mostly regarding medieval Bulgaria, but also Byzantium. Uh, he has works in many languages, maybe our audience being lawyers would find the book Word and Power in Medieval Bulgaria the most interesting because it's in English and it talks a lot about legal terminology and its importance in medieval Bulgaria and I'm sure many comparisons with medieval Serbian law can also be made but he also works a lot on the uh, imperial power in Bulgaria and its ideology and his subject for tonight will be the succession and legitimization of power in Bulgaria among the Assassins of the 14th century. The floor is yours. And Nina already uh, announced uh, the topic of uh, my presentation. Uh, I tried to, uh, to not to follow the exact uh, um, of course, I show a bit uh, the exact uh, circumstances of the succession of power in the uh, 14th century, but mostly to, to present uh, the ideological basis of uh, the choice, uh, uh, the choice, uh, let's say, choice of the uh, future, uh, the following uh, ruler. So, the um, uh, the succession and the legitimation of power in any society is an anthropological problem, strongly dominated by the faith. Power itself could not be studied without reference to religion, which gives uh, the general parameters of the culture of a society and its fundamental values. When we speak about the Middle Ages, we usually think of uh, the inheritance of the supreme power. Nevertheless, the principle of inheritance could challenge uh, the uh, theocratic ideas by touching the foundations uh, of authority. The biological origin cannot replace God's will and God's choice and, uh, in the selection of the ruler. The ideas of Christian unity and uh, the universal vocation for salvation exclude a uh, certain racist notion and those of biological inheritance and also calls into uh, question uh, the heritage in the political field. It practically existed, but uh, its argumentation ever used other ways uh, and reasons to legitimate the ruler's uh, power. Uh, I will present you a brief uh, uh, review, survey of uh, legitimation and uh, succession of power in medieval Bulgaria from the early Middle Ages uh, uh, on. Pagan Bulgaria was a barbarian state where one can find traces of a legitimation of power typical for these transitional societies between tribe or tribal union and state. By st uh, studying uh, the transitions uh, of the people, the traditions of the peoples of the steppe, we find a strong presence of the ruler's clan and uh, intense sacralization of the figure of the sovereign. When we talk about the end of the first Bulgarian Empire and uh, the beginning of the second empire, we see a phenomenon related to the power of the brothers. It could be seen after the death of Tsar Simeon, but especially with uh, the so-called Komitopuri brothers, and uh, after this, uh, the, with the first assassins. From the death uh, of Tsar Kaluyam, 
until the end of 13th century. The history of uh, inheritance uh, is uh, very confusing and one cannot pursue any system. During the first uh, during the first quarter of the 14th century we see a stabilization uh, under the Tartars and a, a transmission of uh, power from Tsar Theodor Svetoslav to his son George II uh, Tartar but the latter's unexpected death at a young age and without a descendant led to a new crisis with uh, the Tsar Michael III Shishmanasen, the Asen dynasty returned to power. How did this happen? The sources, mostly uh, the memories of the ex-Emperor uh, John Cantacuzenus, uh, uh, told us that the Bulgarian dynasts, Samont, the verb used is proskalo, pro, proskalesameni, uh, uh, summoned Michael to Ternu and assigned or proclaimed him Tsar. The verb is apodiknimi, apedixon, uh, by entrusting to him with power. Can we talk about an election? Even if uh, the answer is uh, positive, uh, it should be stressed that uh, this is not a question of a normal uh, succession of uh, power, nor of a usual procedure, but a way of resolving a delicate situation of vacancy of the throne. Michael III fought his death during the Battle of Wilbusch uh, and the transmission of power, or rather, not of power, but of the imperial title, to his uh, son, John Stephen, uh, does not uh, pose any problem. Even more than we should have uh, counted uh, also the help of his uncle, the King of Serbia, who dominated relations between the two countries uh, at that time. Uh, the end of the reign of uh, John Stephen is well known. He was removed from the throne by a uh, uh, coup d'etat organized by the Logotet Philip and the Protovestiarius Raxi. The new Tsar was John Alexander, nephew of Tsar Michael III, then cousin of John Stephen, and then Lord of Lovech. The, <coughs> the story is told uh, to us again by John Cantacuzenos. The considerable difference in the, that uh, is that the deposition of the sovereign is described with the expression diastasiasant es exilasant is archis. So uh, the expression is exelafso, uh, exelafso tis archis, to pull, to push, to hunt out of power by a revolt or rather opposition, which is called diastasis or the, uh, from diastasiasu, to enter into disagreement. Uh, on the other hand, the installation of John Alexander in power is described in the same way as uh, the election of Michael III, eight years before. The verb used is apodiknimi, apedixon vasilia, so uh, to assign, to proclaim tsar. It should be noted another element of the text showing um, uh, that this uh, assignment or proclamation of the new sovereign was not made by the two rebellious dynasts, but from the top of the Bulgarian nobility who were persuaded, the verb is petho, pisantes, by Raxin and uh, Philip, in, by Raxin and Philip. In any case, there was a change in the supreme power, which was probably legitimated, legitimized by the election or a nomination by the top of the Ternovian nobility. So, it was again a, uh, an election due to the vacancy of the throne as a result of uh, extraordinary circumstances. Tsar John Alexander had one of the longest reigns in medieval Bulgarian history, which was full of changes, including the succession uh, to the throne. His family life was very complicated. He had two marriages and nine children, nine children five sons and four daughters. They uh, were Michael Asen, John Stratzimir, and John Asen with his first wife, 
Theodore the first and two sons John Shishman and John Hassan with his second wife Theodore the second the Jewish Sarah it is noteworthy that all his sons carried uh, the imperial title of Tsar from now on until the uh, Ottoman conquest in the end of uh, the 14th century the succession of power was always from father to son but the vicissitudes uh, of uh, life and uh, relationships in the dynasty required different forms of uh, legitimation. Uh, first uh, of all, I shall uh, present uh, to you uh, the charisma of the dynasty and the birth in the imperial family. The charisma of the dynasty comes from the idea of the importance of the units based on, based on descent. As transmitter of identity and general uh, and main values of the society. Birth into the sovereign's family was practically one of the strongest motivations for the succession of power. But uh, from a theological point of view, this argument carried contradictory elements uh, that could be seen through an optic uh, challenging the thesis concerning the supreme uh, authority of the Lord God of the Most High. In order to argue the need uh, to reserve power within a family, we should use other evocations and reasons than blood. The transmission of the crown in a family should have some other reasons and not just the birth uh, or the blood. Uh, not, so, not biological reasons. In primitive societies, the king was incarnation of the ancestor uh, or creator divinity. So he was the divinity himself and uh, the transition uh, transmission went through genealogy. For example, this is the uh, existing uh, genealogies of the Scandinavian royal dynasties from Odin. Some neighbors of Bulgarians, like Hungarians uh, or the Serbs, uh, created Christian tradition of holy kings and even holy dynasties. But this was not the case uh, in either Preslav or Ternovo. Perhaps we owe this uh, different situation to the stronger Byzantine influence. Actually, the Middle Ages, Eastern, as well as, uh, as, well as Western, was a time when almost everything was based uh, on family relations, descent, kinship, common blood, blessed or cursed. Uh, but, the, uh, but the authorities avoided arguing for power through biological heredity from simple birth lineage. Uh, without claiming to develop this problem in details, uh, I shall say that, uh, in my opinion, this conception of refusing the biological argument, arguments dominated sacral kingship in the European and Mediterranean world during the Middle Ages. The genuine hereditary monarchy gained definitely its, pla its place uh, with the rationalization of power during the transmission to uh, the modern times related to the absolutism and in the time of enlightenment. The idea of power in Constantinople, which was ever the main model for Bulgaria, was based mostly on the Holy Scripture and especially on the Old Testament, but designed through grace coming from the New Testament. The people the conception of the people uh, was the uh, immunity which has been called depository of power and exactly it was outlined as new Israel in the evangelical sense of the word. So the faithful united by the Holy Eucharist for the life in God. Succession by inheritance could be justified, justified only if it is closely related to the choice of Lord God and never to the reasons, uh, reasons of biological and natural character. The crown as a symbol of power could only be obtained given by God, uh, the unique uh, source of uh, power. The divine choice 
could be related uh, to the family or the dynasty at the practical level. But uh, at the ideological or theological level, it is to seek other arguments far from the bi biological origin. Let's show the different system uh, to relate the family to uh, the power. First of uh, them is so-called corpus fratrum. I have already mentioned the cases of the collective power of the brothers Komitopuli and Fur Asen needs uh, in the Bulgarian history. This system, called Corpus Fratrum, was uh, typical especially among the peoples of Western, Eastern and Northern Europe. We see uh, there a joint suzerainty, a fraternal government shared between the sons of a great sovereign. Usually, the sharing of power between the brothers is related to the patrimonial uh, theory of the supreme authority, uh, which presents the relations between the sovereign and the state as those between the owner and his property. This points to an absolute domination, which was hardly of, uh, points uh, to an absolute domination which was hardly of political type. It must be recognized that the property bears an identity feature. The best example presents uh, us uh, the nobles who bear the name of their estates. In the public sphere, uh, the situation is different. One need, uh, needs only follow the history of Ross of Kiev and later in order to see that indeed there was no real division of the state uh, related to the corpus fratrum and that the similarity with ownership was fallacious. Every one of the members of the corpus fratrum could have his power, his territory and territory, but power itself remained unified and inseparable. The causes of this collective power uh, could be different, but above all religious, like divine ancestors or a divinity embodied by each generation and so on. The phenomenon of corpus fratrum could be conceived as a manifestation of the collective charisma of the clan, legitimizing the power of the princes. Our research is devoted to Bulgaria. So, my presentation, because this is a development of a text, of course, uh, devoted to Bulgaria, then one of the main countries of the Byzantine Commonwealth. And we should first study the practice in uh, the empire uh, from which the models for Preswav or Ternov originated. In this context, it must be said that the collegiality of power of brothers in the Roman Empire always remained very far from the corpus fratrum that we know among the barbarians or the peoples uh, on the road from tri tribe to state. Corpus fratrum is not applicable for the Comito Puli and even uh, less for 14th century Bulgaria. Although usually there is a brother who uh, occupied the top, the corpus fratrum could remind us uh, of a uh, house in the sense proposed pra uh, by Claude Levi-Strauss, where the hierarchy of the descendants uh, was not very clear. There is always a danger of transferring notion of pri private law to public law, maintaining a unity center on the ancestors cult. The collective authority of the brothers uh, does not present an adequate form of the establishment of the dynasty or of inheritance in general. To be able to do this, one have, has uh, to create a hierarchy among the descendants. This hierarchy itself uh, was imposed by different means with different arguments. One of them is the thesis of primogen primogeniture. The primogeniture should be studied precisely in the context of the importance of the family in the succession uh, of power. It is a manifestation of the weight of the moment of birth, 
but at the same time it could depend on the choice. If one relies uh, on the sequence of birth, the priority of the firstborn seems natural. This is very old conception. Uh, it is followed by ethnologists in the primitive societies and the results are very interesting, but um, it is not our topic. Uh, the family is related to inheritance in general, biological, genetic, social, legal, legal and uh, etc. The primogeniture always played an important role. It is a result of the requirement of uh, a hierarchy of the descendants. Uh, primogeniture is uh, the on, uh, only a principle of harmonization of inheritance or an attempt to create an internal order among the descendants related to the stability in a society. However, this principle is not obvious and should be justified, at least in the public domain. This could be done through the universal code uh, of uh, understanding of the world, which comes from the Holy Scripture. Uh, the most significant story about primogeniture is that the Fisau, uh, who sold his birthright for a bowl of lentil stew. Uh, this is in the book of Genesis, chapter 25. As a continuation of this story, we can also mention the passage where Jacob deceived uh, his father Isaac's blessings uh, by depriving Esau of his right for the second time. This is in the book of Gen uh, Genesis, uh, chapter 27. Thus, the son who came out second from their mother's womb became their father's successor, moreover, in an unfair way. Uh, the Old Testament law did not allow to anybody to sell his birthright, neither to a father to choose which of his sons would have priority of succession. This is fixed by the primogeniture. This is why Jacob received his blessing. There was no choice, either rational or emotional, but uh, by uh, Isaac, uh, but only a deception. <coughs> Notwithstanding, once uh, the deed was accomplished, he could not deny his act, the, the father. Uh, the act of transmitting power is an act of transforming a man into a chosen prince who possesses power through uh, the intervention of the Lord. In this case, Jacob, uh, in the case of Jacob, this intervention was brought about uh, by a pattern of blessing and once after obtaining the new quality of possessor of power, the person remained in it until the moment when this quality is lost by reasons, uh, reasons stemming only for, uh, from theocratic uh, arguments, argumentation. In fact, Byzantium developed strongly the theocratic idea based on the Old Testament and related uh, to the effective power of God in human society. Power came from God, always belonged to him, and earthly lieutenants could justify its uh, exercise only after uh, the intervention of Lord's will, but never for rational and uh, much less uh, for natural reasons, like the consecutive order of birth. For pure primogeniture, we have to wait until the age of enlightenment, as I already stated. The rationalization of the monarchy during absolutism led to a stronger sacralization of the figure and power of the king. The kingship was associated with the conception of the church by its body uh, and its authority. Ernst Kantorowicz has presented this situation in uh, his King's Two Bodies, especially in the chapters where he discussed the subject uh, of kingship and its borrowings 
uh, ideological uh, borrowings from Christology and from the ecclesiastical uh, history in the creation of the image of the sovereign. The historical review of the transmissions of power among the Assinites of the 14th century could give us an idea on the application of the principle of primogeniture. Uh, unfortunately, the sources are not very encouraging to develop any thesis concerning primogeniture as a general principle for succession of imperial power in Bulgaria uh, of the late Middle Ages. We have only two examples uh, of it, Ch uh, Tsar John Stephen and uh, Tsar Michael, the elder son of Tsar John Alexander. One has to look for the application of other arguments and uh, one of the ways uh, to, to get there was the, uh, could be the argument of the porphyrogeniture. The title of Bagrenoroden, Bagrenorodni, is a calc of Greek word porphyrogenitos, born in purple, and uh, de designated the children of the Basileus, born after his succession, as accession, his accession uh, to the throne. This means after the change of the person of the father from an idiot to a sacred the birth taking place in the birthing uh, room of the palace in Constantinople called Porfira. Porfira. In uh, Bulgarian sources, we find the name Bagrenoroden uh, three times during the Second Empire. The first is Char, uh, Tsar Michael II, uh, the son of John II, uh, as said, uh, in the annex, uh, annex, in an inscription from the near, uh, found near to the cell, uh, to the uh, village Royak uh, in the Varna district. The second uh, with uh, Michael Asen, the son of Tsar Constantine uh, Tich Asen, uh, in a manuscript of near uh, 1257. And the third is with Tsar uh, John Shishman the last ruler of the Ternovo, uh, Ternovo Empire, but it is uh, empire only uh, in imagination. Uh, the title and the very principle of the succession of power uh, based on the porphyrogeniture uh, has uh, its roots in Persian Empire. Herodotus uh, tells uh, us that there was such a dispute over the throne between the sons of King Darius. We know that these are children uh, born after the arrival of their father to the throne, which led us to the conception of the sacral kingship. What mattered in Byzantium uh, was the anointing uh, of the Basileus, material or imaginary, uh, as a rite du passage in the sense of Arnold van Genen, through which the father had gone uh, before the moment of conception of the son. In this way, the son, the future successor, was anointed from his mother womb and adopted by God. As for Bulgaria, we uh, must try to distinguish between the theological reasons for this system and the political use, its political use. The three cases of uh, cita citations of the title of Porphyrogenite in Bulgaria are uh, quite problematic from the political point of view. So, we see evidence of a certain depletion of the title of Porphyrogenite in order to stabilize, stabilize the claims of uh, a heir uh, chosen uh, for the throne in delicate and critical times. So, uh, there was a problem with the uh, uh, succession of Tsar uh, John uh, Assen and uh, uh, the death of his first son, uh, Tsar Koman the first, uh, so uh, the position of Michael the second was dedicated, 
Michael, the son of Constantine Tichasen, was never a real ruler of the state. And uh, about uh, John Shishman, this was created only to uh, to put out of the inheritance the older brother, uh, John Stratzimir. Uh, this is what I mean. Practically, it has nothing to do with the divine choice and the synchronization of power, which was only abused for political and family reasons. And so we shall pass to the title of Yang Tsar. We have seen that almost all the sons of uh, the Sen uh, rulers of the 14th century carried the title of Tsar, granted uh, to them by their fathers. What is the meaning of this isotomy? Uh, which is a carrier of the family, uh, uh, which is clearer in the family of John Alexander. First of all, it must be emphasized that this was not a certain sharing of power. Uh, there was uh, always a sovereign uh, autocrat and the sons were only holders uh, of their titles without cons uh, concrete functions, neither power or territory. There was no collective power or division of the territory between the bearer of Tsar's title. Um, the only reason for the isotomy was the father's sovereign's desire to ensure the succession of the crown within his family, which testifies the absence of secure, uh, secure rules of succession. <laughs> Such uh, a situation would require uh, the establishment of, uh, of a type of hierarchy between the sons, and one of uh, the ways to achieve to this through, uh, was uh, through the title of Yang Tsar. Uh, we uh, find uh, the, the title uh, twice in medieval Bulgaria. Uh, these are the cases of John Stratzimir in the colophon uh, raised from the manuscript of uh, the Tetra Evangelium uh, Vidin of 1352 and uh, John Shishman in the so called uh, collection of Pervoslav. It is obvious that in both cases there was a delicate situation in the family of John Alexander and uh, that influences the succession of power too. The title of uh, Junior Vex is of Hungarian origin, but also enters into Serbian practice, where it has a strong, uh, had a strong development. In Hungary, these relations are attested uh, starting with King Geza II, 1141-1162, uh, uh, and his son Stephen III. During the 13th century, the, uh, the title acquired practical, particular importance because of the strong position of some among the young kings, the great power uh, they had and the conflict with their father. From Hungary, the figure of the young king had, uh, had its uh, diffusion in the Balkan countries. In Serbia, it uh, was the case of King uh, Uruš and his son Dragutin in 1271. Uh, later, uh, Stephen Dechansky uh, proclaimed his son Stefan Dušan, a young king in uh, 1322. Dušan himself proclaimed, uh, proclaimed his son Stefan Uroš, uh, young king, and then King Vukashin promoted his son Marko as a young king. In Serbia, the title has significant uh, use and development and is still uh, related to the legacy of power, but in, uh, it differs from uh, its Magyar origin. Uh, in Bulgaria, the title came from Serbia, of course, uh, we fought the Serbian model rather than Hungarian. There is no evidence that uh, the young Tsar had any territory under his rule. Uh, it is true that uh, as for John Strasimir, the title is testified in a manuscript created in Vidin, the Tetra Evangelium from 1352. 
but the city was not yet under his authority, at his capital, as it was later. That, uh, that is why I believe that this uh, title should be studied in the, and conceived as a manifestation of the will of the sovereign autocrat, so the father, uh, for, for designation of his successor or a part of, uh, of uh, uh, power. And we pass to the second uh, uh, form, uh, which is not uh, uh, related to, to the family. This is the election. At the time of the Second Empire, there were two or three cases when the not, uh, uh, nobility designated the Tsar. Two of them took, uh, took place when there was no one to succeed uh, the deceased, uh, the deceased uh, rulers. Uh, there was, uh, uh, these were the accidents after the date of Michael the, uh, the second ascent in 13th century and uh, the following civil war in Bulgaria and after the, the unexpected date, uh, the second case, unexpected death of Tsar George II the Tartar and the election of the new Tsar Michael III. The third case, which remain insert, remains uncertain, is in the context of the deposition of already mentioned of John Stephen and designation of John Alexander as ruler of Bulgaria. This is quite possible that the form of this uh, designation as well as uh, earlier ones in 50, uh, 12, uh, 57 and uh, 13, uh, 23 was a choice of the highest dignitaries. Elective monarchies has been, have, uh, have been uh, well known in the history from ancient times to the present day. These are the uh, are Rome of kings before the Republic, uh, the Holy Roman Empire, practically one can include Serenissima Respublica, uh, despite uh, it uh, uh, itself uh, Respublica, uh, Poland for uh, the, a certain period and so on. In the Byzantine and post-Byzantine world, it was the case uh, with the principalities of Wallachia and Bulgaria. Elective monarchy and the election of rulers uh, come from divine choice. As far as God does not intervene directly and openly in our uh, world, the election of a certain body could represent the choice of a divinity or of the Most High. Nevertheless, the theocratic power belonged to God, but in the world, theocratic power resides in the people, and any popular choice could be seen as a divine choice as well. The Bulgarian cases are pure accidents related to the lack of uh, successor of the throne or uh, to a coup d'etat. Um, we have no information that such a practice existed uh, under normal circumstances. In the context of a crisis, the country's summit was looking for a resolution and a decision to appoint the Tsar, and the election might be the first idea that uh, uh, came to them. To avoid assumptions and imagination, I would uh, like to warn uh, that, in my opinion, Bulgaria did not know uh, a real elective monarchy uh, and the accidents mentioned cannot convince us in the opposite direction. So it passed, uh, passed to the associated uh, association to the power. Post sovereignty was a system of uh, ensuring the continuity of the succession of power in uh, society, which did not know or did not recognize inherit inheritance as a way of appointing the next uh, head of uh, the state. It is found uh, uh, throughout Europe, East and West. The Eastern Roman Empire is a classic example. The associated to power is a part 
uh, towards establishment of uh, dynastic succession. Sure. Uh, the possibility of the ruling emperor or king to enthrone uh, the one whom he wished to assign to his successor could guarantee the extension of his reign and that of his ancestors without applying the heritage. Of course, the associated to power uh, were uh, above all sons of uh, the emperor or the, of the king, but uh, there were exceptions where uh, the promoted partner uh, was not a relative. Free choice of the emperor, uh, for example, uh, this is the case of Michael III, the emperor Michael III, and the uh, emperor Basil I, the, uh, the founder of the Macedonian dynasty, or usurpation like uh, John Lascaris, uh, like uh, Michael the, uh, the Palaiologos uh, in the time of the uh, uh, young John Lascaris, or the case of uh, uh, John Cantacuzinos. Gilbert de Grun, the sense, uh, the differences between the goals of uh, association to power in different uh, diverse societies. In Rome, uh, this was to avoid uh, the handover of power after the sovereign's death and uh, the procedures um, uh, demanded by Republican tradition. In the Western kingdoms, it was the early election uh, which presented the rights uh, of the son and gave him the opportunity to learn about uh, the state administration. In Byzantium, associated to the association to the Basilea, Vasilia, uh, emphasized uh, her her uh, uh, heredity and continu continuity of a line. Uh, familial line, personal, political, and so on, and facilitated the transmission of real power into the hands of one uh, who had already uh, had the quality of emperor. The constitutional form of co-sovereignty diffused practically in all the countries under the influence of Constantinople. It is found in Bulgaria and Serbia, in Romanian principalities. Law sovereignty was widely applied by the Tsars of the Asen dynasty during 14th century. Almost all of the Tsars proclaimed almost all of their sons uh, to be co-Tsars. Uh, it cannot be avoided to recognize that these actions were uh, related to dynastic spirits and to the practical inheritance of uh, power. So, I pass to the conclusion. During the 14th century, in Bulgarian state, uh, the Bulgarian state witnessed four or five changes to the throne in Ternu or Vidi. They were different and sometimes contradictory. The only thing I dare to summarize is that in Bulgaria in general, Byzantine models were followed, but we could not claim an intact correspondence in, uh, of practices. Uh, there was a strong dynastic presence. Uh, there were internal uh, conflict in the same family. There was also a division of the, of the state and the formation of an independent center in Vidir, but no pre pretenders from other families, nor serious military antagonism. If we compare with the situation of the Palaiologians uh, in Byzantium, we will find similarities and differences. The position of the Basileis uh, was also stable despite the temporary uh, interruption by the Cantacuzinos family, a family which was nevertheless integrated into the dynasty of the reigning emperors. On the other hand, it must be recognized that the internal dy dynastic conflict, conflicts in Constantinople were numerous and more serious. In any case, and without going into details, 
I believe that the dynastic domination won, won, uh, was one of the common features between the two countries during the time. If we seek uh, parallels between the policy of the Palaeologian emperors of associating their uh, their sons uh, with the, uh, with the empire, to the empire and those of Bulgarian Tsars and the Bofal of John Alexander, we should do so, uh, uh, should do this very uh, carefully. Co-sovereignty is an ancient practice that could not be confined to the times in which we are uh, concerned. If ever one uh, searches um, <coughs> for the common features, it is to discern the conjuncture uh, during and after the long reign of uh, the John the Sec the fifth uh, Palaeologus, when we see a multiplication and dispersion of the imperial, uh, imperial titles. We might be tempted to assume collegial power there, but the relationships in the family regarding politics and personal ambitions do not allow it. In any case, it was undoubtedly a program uh, aimed at rising the significance of the imperial family and this uh, in this direction. It could be studied in parallel with uh, that of Tsar John Alexander. The 14th century, uh, 14th and 15th century were the time of agony of the Byzantine Balkan world. The word agony should be understood uh, in um, uh, its uh, original sense. A struggle to survive uh, and competition with that. This situation caused a consolidation around Constantinople. If the political approaches of the various masters uh, of the two numerous uh, uh, states uh, did not always confirm these observations, it was seen uh, at another level. The religious, cultural, spiritual, legal, institutional, and so on, consolidation is uh, evident. Therefore, I will uh, conclude with uh, the reflection of the assertion uh, that the succe uh, succession and the legitimation of power is an uh, anthropological problem rooted in the, into the culture of the society. In this sense, this phenomenon cannot remain outside the impact of the main values of civilization uh, which came from Byzantium. The empire was always the source of the models for the orthodox Slavs. This conclusion is valid for the entire Byzantine world without denying the pecu peculiarities of each country. In Russia, for example, we know the lasting uh, uh, influence of the Varangians, replaced by that of the Tartar Khanates. In Serbia, there is a dynastic uh, holiness influence, uh, influenced by Hungarian uh, practice. Usually, Bulgarian follows Byzantine models more faithfully. I believe that uh, we have a similar case in the line of succession of power during the last century before the Ottoman conquest. The differences existed, but we also see a system based on the theocratic idea, pointing that the determination of the Most High, of the Lord God, should decide everything. The problem is that we have difficulties to per uh, of perceiving and comprehending His uh, will. However, officially, the, uh, however, officially the uh, inheritance was rejected, but the family continuity was always kept and maintained, which cre created dyn dynasties but did not institutionalize them, especially with regard to the succession of the throne. Finally, the transmission of power was dominated by the will of the father taking the form of uh, sovereignty and associating the association to the empire, as well as other form already mentioned, which were sufficient adjusted to be seen as a manifestation of the will of the Father representing the will of God. Finally, 
I would like to stress this text that I showed you in the beginning, and uh, uh, the same that you can see uh, on your screen. Um, we have the text of two imperial charters of the period. The Crucible of Tsar John Alexander uh, of, uh, from the year uh, 1347, uh, uh, where we read, after the death of my majesty, the one who will be my successor, anyone, either one of the much beloved children of my majesty or one of the relatives of my majesty, uh, be that whom God elects and places on the uh, throne of my majesty, anyone, anyone among the Orthodox Christians. A similar text, uh, but with the mention of the brothers of my majesty, my empire, uh, one finds in the charter of, uh, for the Rio Monastery of Tsar Joshishman of the year 1378. I do not believe that these quotations should be overinterpreted. They are not, of course, a manifesto of the plans, ambitions, and wishes of the Tsar concerning the future of his power. Nevertheless, these words demonstrate uh, the ideological bas basis of the power in medieval Bulgaria without taking, taking into account of which no authority would be neither legitimate nor stable, coherent and solid. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So we're opening the discussion now. If you have the possibility to ask your questions orally, Professor Sima, test your microphone, please. I just want to wish welcome to Ivan. Sorry that I was late. There was a very important event in the uh, Pontificio Instituto Orientale in Rome. And on my way back, Rome was completely overcrowded with vehicles. The Christmas time already began here. So I'm sorry that I didn't follow the main part of your lecture. But according to the conclusion and the last words, I'm really really happy that you are our guest. So I give a floor to those who had opportunity to listen to all your lecture. Welcome again to Forum and come to us again at any time. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I hope to continue our uh, At least you can be from now on our guest to the meetings online. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions? If you can ask them orally, go ahead. If you can't, feel free to type them in the chat and we'll read them. You can ask in Serbian as well and we'll translate it if needed and it probably won't even be needed. Oh, while people are thinking, I'd have a short question of my own since you uh, mentioned the biblical models and the story of Esau and Jacob in context of the primogeniture. Uh, were there any biblical models that were frequently used in the charters or other documents of Bulgarian emperors, some role models that they used to compare their own actions to the biblical figures? Uh, yes, in the charters, but uh, you know, uh, uh, we have very few uh, uh, medieval documents, about 10. All of them. Uh, uh, so, uh, of course, the biblical citations in them are uh, exist and are very important. But we can find also in another uh, narrative texts. Uh, and uh, yes, for sure, um, this uh, uh, these ideas uh, last. Uh, so launched by the uh, by the citations from the Holy Scripture and especially from the Old Testament uh, are very important for us as uh, for any uh, everyone um, 
uh, everyone uh, medieval country. But I have to, to stress that our uh, tradition of, uh, of uh, this idea, because it exists, I somehow I mentioned it, uh, I studied it in my book on the uh, tale of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, our tradition is not so strong as uh, yours, uh, Serbian, I mean. The Serbian tradition is uh, really, but you have more texts uh, also. Thank you very much. We have a question. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan, for your conference. I want to ask a short question out of curiosity. You mentioned the, the position of uh, the son of Michael the Third, uh, Shishman. Um, are there yes. any uh, telling the, the motivation of this deposition in the sources? I mean. It was uh, a coup d'etat organized to uh, promote uh, Ivan Alexander as uh, Tsar, but uh, do you know any, it's had the sources, sources mentioning any explanation for this uh, deposition? Uh, it is, uh, it is a bit uh, hard to, to, uh, to insist that uh, this was organized exactly to put John Alexander uh, uh, on the throne uh, because uh, they were killed by him, the both organizers. Of, uh, of course, this could be uh, propaganda uh, to, to, to keep uh, himself uh, from this. Uh, you know the disaster uh, after the Battle of Velbrst uh, when the Serbian troops uh, killed uh, the Tsar. Uh, Michael the third, and after this, uh, there was a huge Serbian domination on, on Bulgaria, and of course, one of the explication is uh, that they try to oppose of this uh, Serbian uh, domination. But I doubt, uh, because uh, we can uh, say that under John Alexander. The Serbian domination somehow continued. It was not so clear as uh, before him uh, in the brief uh, reign of uh, uh, John Stefan, but uh, it continued and uh, uh, Bulgaria, there are many reasons. The brother of uh, the Tsar was in Serbia, uh, despot uh, Johan Komlinosen, uh, his uh, sister was. Uh, uh, wife of Stefan Dushan and uh, so on. Uh, I think that uh, this was mostly struggles uh, in the frame of uh, the dynasty. But this is a question that should be studied uh, indeed. I have in mind some Valachian cases when I ask it. Ah, uh, the the relations uh, with uh, this is interesting too. Yes. No, no. Uh, uh, I have in mind a similar case in Valachia. It's a prince which was killed and uh, replaced by. And uh, there was uh, all sort of uh, motivations. He was uh, loyal to the Hungarians. He was loyal to the Turks, and so on. Uh, somehow, yes. a similar explanation. Uh, a, a relation with a foreign power, which was considered uh, an acceptable by uh, members of uh, the Valachian League. So this is why I asked. Uh, yes, this uh, this is uh, the dominating uh, opinion that this was an anti-Serbian uh, action, a coup d'etat. Uh, but uh, the, the politics, uh, good uh, collaboration with Serbia continued. Uh, after this, and uh, for sure, Serbia was uh, the great power in the Balkans this uh, time. Military, economically, culturally too, and so on. Thank, Thank you for the question. Matthias Stojanovic has a question. 
Okay, thank you very much for giving the opportunity to ask the question. Uh, I was interested in what degree did the uh, medieval uh, political philosophy of Bulgaria uh, impact the modern um, Bulgarian statehood for, after the liberation from the Turks? Uh, was it, uh, w w were the lawmakers, the, the monarchs uh, explicit in their, uh, maybe even through some uh, legal acts, uh, preambles and so on, uh, were they explicit in establishing a continuity with the Bulgarian empires of the medieval ages? So that's uh, my question. To what extent uh, can we see a reference, explicit or even implicit reference to the medieval uh, legal documents and so on? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. It is interesting. Uh, I think that uh, actually uh, the medieval uh, ancestors were uh, used mostly as a propaganda, but uh, without any uh, uh, any continuity of the political or philosophical ideas. The main point, however, is the title of Tsar. Uh, when Bulgaria gained uh, its uh, independence in uh, 1908, uh, they proclaimed, uh, the king, uh, the prince uh, Ferdinand proclaimed himself Tsar, not king, like in Serbia. Uh, because I think, so, in the 20th century, uh, the titles were the the same uh, meaning finally but tsar was uh, more traditional uh, we have no king this title uh, exists of course in the language and so on but bulgaria had uh, never a king uh, so the continuity with the the uh, the term of Tsar for designation of the ruler of the country in the beginning of 20th century is the main uh, feature of continuity, uh, but uh, it is only formal. Anyway, uh, there is question that when the Russian emperor understood that the Bulgarian prince proclaimed himself Tsar, uh, he was a bit angry and said, these Bulgarians are crazy or what, what a Tsar in, uh, <laughs> in Bulgaria. Uh, but uh, actually, this, this was the same, uh, diplomatically, uh, juridically and so on, the title in the 20th century was the same, King and Tsar. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? If not, let us thank Dr. Bilalski once again for a very interesting lecture. We are very glad that you were our guest and we really do hope that you will be that soon again, perhaps live in Belgrade and not just over the internet. Uh, thank you, uh, Nina, for the help. Uh, to, to organize this uh, in the presentation too. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, I hope that you, you will announce me uh, the, the lectures uh, following and we shall continue our collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to announce uh, to the others, next week we have again Professor Victor Castellani from the University of Denver, who's going to run another uh, ancient simulation, a trial of Alcibiades in absentia in Athens with our students. Uh, and that's going to be combined live and online. So you can watch on the WebEx link, but you can also attend in person in amphitheater too. So we hope that you'll come. Don't forget that at such trials, you are also the jury, so you will be able to vote whether Al Alcibiades is guilty or not. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next week. See you.